what does this mean to U.S. national security and what should we be doing about it? The answer to foreign intelligence threats is a counterintelligence capability. The first thing to understand is that counterintelligence means a great deal more than catching spies, although let me add that is an important part. Counterintelligence includes all activities to identify, assess, and degrade the intelligence activities of foreign adversaries. But in the past, even though the intelligence threat these activities the way foreign governments organize themselves to conduct these activities are strategic in nature, we have not thought about counterintelligence as a strategic national security tool. Historically, counterintelligence in the United States has grown up in three separate organizations. Far and away, the lead agency for counterintelligence is the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Their major job, of course, is to enforce the espionage laws of the United States. They have developed, over the many years, they have been our lead CI agency, very aggressive and effective investigative and other capabilities to carry out this job. The Central Intelligence Agency also has a major counterintelligence role. They are the premier collector of human intelligence. And they have to be concerned that their ability to, to, to collect those vital insights of human intelligence is effective and is compromised by foreign intelligence organizations working against them. And so they practice counterintelligence as a means of ensuring the effectiveness of their core mission. Each of the military services also has an important counterintelligence job to protect against enemy intelligence operations and to protect the force against those activities. Through its history, U.S. counterintelligence has well-established tactical, tactical objectives and processes, but has unmet, unrealized potential in the strategic arena in understanding what are the threats against the United States, how the foreign governments, terrorist organizations, and others use these threats to advance their interests, and what can we collectively do about it in a coherent, integrated way. Because of the way that counterintelligence has grown up in separate agencies with no overarching structure, no national leadership above them, we have never developed common principles or a counterintelligence doctrine that really, that, that, that really guides the profession of counterintelligence. Among our, our CI, CI counterintelligence, CI agencies, there's a great deal of bilateral cooperation, as you would expect. But no national orchestration of these different activities. And as I mentioned, until recently, there has been no central leadership. So at the start of the 21st century, U.S. counterintelligence, in fact, suffered from many of the same deficiencies that the 9-11 Commission found in our counterterrorism efforts. What are they? No systematic collection or analysis <clears throat> of the threats. No, no common operating picture of the threat. No coherent assignment of resources to counter foreign intelligence activities. Because we've had, an, we have not had an ability to pull all of the parts together, we have found ourselves less prepared in wartime than we should have been. These are among the lessons that came out of the Iraq War, where our ability to be able to characterize the activities and identify the activities of then Saddam Hussein's intelligence forces worldwide fell far short of what 
we should have been able to do going into that war. And so a lot of self-criticism, self-analysis came out of that effort. As a consequence, again, of these breaks among the several counterintelligence agencies, we have had continuing damage from espionage and continuing vulnerability to foreign intelligence threats that arguably we would not sustain if we really had the strategic capability to identify, assess, and degrade these foreign intelligence threats. This, in fact, was the finding of an interagency study called CI-21 that was commissioned in the Clinton administration. CI-21 judged that the central core that was needed to provide strategic direction to counterintelligence was missing. President Clinton signed PDD, Presidential Decision Directive 75, the last presidential directive that he signed in national security before he left office. And that created the, the Office of the National Counterintelligence Executive. And Congress took a look at where we stood in, in, in counterintelligence and our needs. It validated the president's findings and then up the ante one. It created in the Counterintelligence Enhancement Act of 2002 the position of National Counterintelligence Executive reporting to the President. And the job assigned to the NCIX, as this mouthful of a title gets reduced, the NCIX, the job assigned to head U.S. counterintelligence, provides strategic direction to the enterprise to ensure the integration of U.S. counterintelligence the threat of assessments budgeted program guidance and operational prioritization. And this was the job in 2003 to which President Bush appointed me. Now the law provides careful functions of the Office of the NCIX. Those functions include producing a national threat assessment and a national strategy based on that threat assessment. To then coordinate counterintelligence resource allocations across the government to ensure conformity with these national priorities and to prioritize CI operations and collections requirements. This challenge is very much like generically the challenges that Jim and John have been describing this morning for the whole of the U.S. national security system. How do we integrate across disparate activities? How do we bring strategic direction to these activities? How do we pull things together? And, and so the position of NCIX, and what my experiences when I was in that office, tracked very nicely with precisely the kinds of questions that the Project on National Security Reform is trying to study and learn from. With the responsibilities that the NCIX is given, let me list some of the authorities that the office does not have under existing law and directive. Redirecting resource allocations, no. Approving programs or budgets, Establishing new strategic counterintelligence program elements? No. Set collection requirements? No. Oversee or engage in operations? No. Direct departments or agencies to provide support to the office? Not even that. There was a rather important mismatch, as I saw it, between what we were trying to accomplish in creating the NCIX and the powers and authorities that were given to the office. It's a little, it, and, and, and for someone coming in with a responsibility that is so serious and so ambitious, but so limited in authority, 
It's an interesting psychology. It's sort of like, I mean, how many here, anyone here watch the show Survivor? I'm not a, uh, uh, as someone who's usually uh, watching the Survivor, but I'm interested in the psychology of that because as I understand the concept, you're thrown on an island, you've got to, you've got to make do with what you've got. And the interesting thing about making do with what you've got is that it really does focus the mind and bring home in on exactly what is most important to get the job done. And so a lot of my experience and that of my staff really was looking at what is truly essential to get the job done. And I will tell you now, and I will explain later, that the lack of these authorities, wall of great concern, proved to be not the most difficult problem that we faced. The first thing that we had to do was to develop a national counterintelligence strategy. This was the linchpin from which all the other programs would be, against which all the other programs would be arrayed. So the new strategy was our principal objective. Based on a comprehensive threat assessment, which is to say all that the U.S. government already knew about foreign intelligence activities, how do you wrap and stack them? What are the most concerned? How are they of most concern? Based on national security considerations, tying those things together, what is the strategic approach to dealing with foreign intelligence threats? First, national counterintelligence strategy was approved by President Bush in 2005. It was the first ever for the nation. It was the first formal mission statement for what I will call strategic counterintelligence as an instrument of national security strategy. And because it was the first mission statement, it was important that it get as wide a distribution as possible, and so we made it Classified, unclassified. Now the implementation plans, of course, were highly classified, but the strategy itself is available for the public to see. It was a sharp departure from past practices, especially given its core focus on proactive strategic operations. We called on each of the operating elements, the FBI, the CIA, and the military services to assume important new duties. And it, may, it, it called for building a counterintelligence system, a national security counterintelligence system, and the new tools of that system <coughs> to execute strategic counterintelligence operations. Together, the strategy put forth the need for major but achievable changes in the way we do business. That was the strategy. It was approved by the president, and then that happened. Well, the first thing that we needed to do was to develop the implementation plans, and so.